Hey, my name is Brian Dodson. Just checking back in with y'all. Um, been to prison three times, county jail, of course, and the uh, Department of Juvenile Justice Center. I got arrested first when I was nine years old, and that's for breaking into the neighbor's house across the street and destroying it with some older kids. And um, I was put on probation and violated, and it just kept going back and hanging out with the wrong crowd. Um, of course, lots of drugs. And also, it, it got real bad, you know, when guns got involved and stuff like that, and charges start getting enhanced. And, uh, you know, I ended up going to prison three times over all that. That's where I got all these tattoos. When's and, the first time you got in trouble for a gun? Well, that would be right when I was about 20-something. Can't tell you the exact day. We broke into another house, me and some buddies of mine, and we, it was an ex-Marine, and we stole about 15 guns that he had in there, and I got charged with nine of them. And there was two people gonna testify on me, so I took a plea deal for them to drop the charges down to just grand theft, because they couldn't find the guns. Luckily, I'm the only one who knew where the guns were. And you wouldn't tell them. And I wouldn't tell Damn, them. Damn, that's strong, dude. Yeah. What did they do to get you to try to tell them? What'd they say, what'd they do to try to coerce you into telling them where those guns were, man? Well, they must have hit you hard. They lied to me, first of all, and then I asked for my discovery, because you can do that. You can ask for your discovery, and it'll give you every detail, who said what, even the interviews with the detectives that the other co-defendants had. And once I realized that everybody was trying to pin it on me and all that, I remembered I had the ace in the hole. Nobody knew where the guns were but me. So I was able to did pop you ever, out to a deal. Did you ever go back and get the guns? No, nah, I sold them to somebody undisclosed. Okay, so you knew where they outside were. Outside of the you, circle. You went and got them or you told someone where they were and they gave you the money? No, I had them. I went and took them to this person that bought oh. them. Which was the owner of a bar. <laughs> the owner of a bar? And coke dealer. Wow. Yeah. What kind of guns were they? Well, there was like two 30 op sixes and a couple handguns and a, even a police issued 45. How'd that come into the mix? He was an ex-Marine. He must have been an ex-cop, too. He must have served in law enforcement as well. Okay. So, have you ever heard the expression, catch a body? Yes. What's that mean? That you kill somebody. You ever caught a body? No. You wouldn't say if you did, probably, huh? No. Because you've never been caught no. catching a body. I would say if I did anyways, but I haven't, honestly. Do you remember anyone in prison from the three, three times you've been in prison? Who was your best friend in prison you ever made that you thought, felt close to? Um, I'd say my last bunkie, John Wilson. He's from up north Florida. Is and, he still uh, in prison? No, he's out. We rode out in the same cell for a while for like two years. You ever talked to him? Yeah, I still talk to him. I still got him on Facebook. Just in case he sees this, off chance he happens to see this, or you point him to it, talk to him. Say, hey, John, let me tell you something. This is what I think. Hey, John Wilson, you already know what I think. Me and you, we did we did what we said we were going to do that whole time in that cell. And I kept my word, and you kept yours, and you're a good man. Did you see very much rape in prison? Um, no, I didn't see any, but it has happened, but it's not, it's not as common as people... Not as thinking. prevalent? It's not as prevalent as far as rape goes. Mm -hmm. There are some uh, vulnerable inmates that come in for their first time and they get finessed, is what I call it. They get fed and give stuff and next thing you know, they're turned, out. they're turned out and something happens to them. And I, I didn't witness any of it, but you can see obviously there's stuff like that going on in there, especially with the lifers. The lifers, they target vulnerable people like that. Were you, were you friends with some lifers? How many lifers are there, and were you friends with a lot of them? No, I kind of stayed in my own circle. That's what I'm supposed to do. Um, I did work out with a couple lifers. You know, I did play chess with a couple lifers. And I also played Scrabble and stuff like that with plenty of people who had life sentences. Slept next door to people with life sentences. So being in the Crips, now the Crip is... Um, is not an all-white gang. That's not a racial thing. There are blacks and whites in, in, in the Crips. In the, what was the name of your gang, your section of the Crips? It's the, uh, it's not the Crips. It's just the same set. It's Insane Gangster Disciples. Okay. So were there also African-American guys, black guys in that gang? Yeah, there's white, black, and Spanish. That's my wife. I'm just 
okay. turning the phone on so she knows. So she's here in the interview. Uh -huh. Yeah, she's in the interview now. Hello, ma'am. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. We're just doing an interview here with your husband. Very interesting gentleman. Um, we uh, we appreciate the, the support. I'm sure you're giving him to turn his life around, and I'm sure he appreciates it too. You're you're welcome to listen and participate in the interview with us here today. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. So, how long have you been married? I've been married two years. I've been with her three, mm -hmm. and uh, I met her. I was I, when I got out of prison. I got since I I tried my hardest to do good in there. I got a little deal where I could be in the halfway house for three months. And I did relapse a couple times when I first got out, but then I met my wife at the uh, Serenity Club. That's why my daughter's name Serenity, and uh, changed my life ever Serenity since. Serenity Club is that a what kind of place is that? It's for NA meetings and AA meetings. Oh, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. So tell us about uh, the first time you shot up any drug. What was your first intravenous drug use experience? Um, first time um, was unwillingly. Um, I was actually asleep and uh, my ex-wife stuck a needle in my arm. And ever since then, um, I liked it. So I, it was a bad road to go down. What kind of person sticks a needle in somebody's arm with an addictive drug without them knowing about it? That's terrible. Yeah, it's horrible. Um, but that's the truth, you know what I mean? So that's how I, that's a, but I'm probably sure I probably would have tried it anyways if it didn't happen that way because I like it, you know what I mean? I liked it. You ever shot up heroin? Um, not, not intentionally but yeah I have one accident yeah have you ever accidentally used fentanyl that you know of yeah that wasn't an accident I was drunk and um, I went and got some and tried it and overdosed the first time have you ever used the blueberries the oxycons yeah I've used them sold them have you um, injected those yeah I have did you ever go doctor shopping and pick them up yes I did I drove from Kentucky with my uncle all the way down to Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale was the place for that, wasn't it? Yeah. South Florida. Yeah. Well, Do you remember the name of the clinic? No, I don't. But I was on, I wasn't even old enough. I was 17 or 19, riding around with my uncle, and we were taking other people with us. But they had to give us half of their prescription. That's how the, I understand. You know, that's how the game works from the documentaries I've seen. Yeah. That's so right. the, the name of the clinic did it have pain in it. Well, I'm not sure. I, it probably did. Even at, I know the doctor had a yacht, and I know that if you got there and it was a long line, you could pay to get to the front line. Did you get the stuff prescribed to you, or were you just tagging along with your uncle? I was tagging along with my uncle. Because you weren't really old. You I had shoot. warrants in Florida, uh, and he's in Kentucky, so I went up there, and uh, I didn't know what he was getting into or what he was doing, and that's what he was doing, and that's what I was doing. You still stay in touch with that uncle? No. No. I see him on Facebook, but I've tried to friend request him and check on him, but he's still doing the same stuff, so I can't be around him. Tell us about your relationship with your with, your, with the man who you thought was your biological dad and your biological mom. How was that relationship? How is that relationship? Um, we don't speak anymore. Um, he screwed my mom over, and he's a loser. Okay, how about your mom? You still in touch with her? Yeah, she lives with me. I take care of my mom. How old is she? She's 65. There's okay. nothing medically wrong with her, nothing like that, but I take care of my mama. Okay, well, that's good. Know, yeah. So, you doing okay financially? Uh, and uh, What does your wife do? Me and my wife work at the same job, and she's at Walmart right now, so she works two jobs. Okay, is she on break at Walmart? Yeah, she's on break right now. Okay, which Walmart is it? Roosevelt one? Missouri. Okay. All right, folks, thanks very much for watching. We might get another segment with this gentleman if he has time. Stay tuned.